Ola Anikula Okuti says, water no get enemy. But uh, today's program, the environment and you, we shall be looking at the effects of the torrential rains we're having across the country and um, the issues of flooding, erosion, the issue of wastewater management, and then the multiplier effects. Just yesterday, a building collapsed in Kuba, a two-story uh, complex that was being put up. And that uh, complex had been under construction for the last uh, three years. And uh, just before people packed in, it came down. And just like every other building in suburbs and in cities in Nigeria, homeless people, because Nigeria has a 40 million housing deficit, were packed under it. We hear from the authorities, two, five taken to hospital, but it is feared that uh, those numbers might be more than that. In the program this morning, we'll open the lines for a discourse. We'll look at these issues dispassionately and uh, what could be the causes, remote and immediate, the short, medium and long-term solutions to housing problems, the issues of flooding, and the general climate change, the ecology and climate change issues presented, and just like NIMET has given a rain and weather forecast for the remaining parts of the year, and that over 120 local governments, as of our 704 uh, local governments nationwide will uh, see a higher outing and interface with water issues and flooding necessarily taking place in those areas. We'll look at these salient issues and then we'll bear our minds. The phone lines are open immediately as we come back. We'll give the phone numbers to call in. Do stay with us. Water, no get enemy. A wonderful listening. Good morning. wonderful good morning to us all out there and uh, just as we said earlier on in the introduction to the program today we'll be discussing the issues that have to do with uh, the change in the climatic structure of Nigeria and uh, uh, current issues that have to do with building collapse uh, due to heavy or heavier downpour um, occasioned by uh, weather changes. In fact, it is not a, a new phenomenon. It's um, happening across the globe 
across um, areas and um, in Lagos there have been recent building collapse there's one in Port Harcourt uh, building collapse in Delta uh, that trapped persons and uh, many died building collapse we, we can even remember casting our mind backwards to the building collapse at uh, uh, Lagos uh, in uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua's church at the time and all that went up the hue and cry in Jabi also years back about 15 years ago by the Jabi uh, motor park opposite um, the building came down and that was about six story structure and then we were made to be, uh, realize I belonged to a serving governor at the time that was uh, uh, President Olushe Guabasan just uh, the last just before 2006-2007. A lot has been happening in the area of construction, building collapse, building management. The one in Ikoi recently that uh, came down, 20-story structure, and a lot has happened. And up till now, the coroner's inquest came out, and so many issues were presented in that. This morning's program because of this high impact area in our lives and the issues of uh, housing and housing management the issue of sustainability climate change and all the inter uh, interactions the cross-cutting issues the environment are you this morning we we'll look into these issues and you're invited to an open discourse let us feel free to call in the phone lines in the studio. Zero MTN line is zero nine zero three two 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 nine seven nine seven. I take it again. MTN line zero nine zero three two 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 nine seven nine seven. The Airtel line is zero eight zero eight two 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 zero three seven. I take it again. Airtel line. Zero eight zero eight two 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 zero three seven, and the nine mobile line is zero eight one eight two 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 zero five. Lines open and let us talk. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes. Good morning. How is uh, how was the night, sir? We bless God. How was yours, sir? It was okay. My name is Ibrahim. I'm calling from Nyanya and Gwanhausawa to be specific, sir. Ibrahim from Nyanya and Gwanhausawa. You've had our intro this morning about building the rains, the collapse. What's, which area are you looking at, sir? Sir, moreover, I want the government to put eyes on that issue before anybody will put to start any erection. They should follow due process. You understand? Engineers, the, the cost of all this is quack engineers. Okay. You understand? So, engineers who don't know how to, how, how, who don't know anything about building, the people just contract them. Yes. Construction. And the, the contractors will use fake materials. Yes. So and they can pay more, more money. You understand? Yes. The cement, when they are supposed to use 10 cement, certain parts of cement, they will use six. And yes. And go away with the remaining the money of four banks. These yes. are the cause of all these things, sir. Yes. These are coming to put eyes on all the buildings that they are, they are, they are doing in, in, in Abuja so that we can choose the stoppage of all this uh, house collapse. It's very dangerous, sir. I saw it on the IT yesterday. I was not happy about this, sir. Yes, it happened uh, yesterday through the night. It collapsed. And uh, yeah, the one, the one, the one, the one. I saw it on the IT yesterday in the night, sir. Yes, yes. And it's very worrisome. It's not a good one. And we bless God that uh, the building was yet to be... Uh, people are not habiting it officially because they are just completing the works there. Uh, any other contribution? Uh, so that is my take, sir. We put to all my so that the Sarolati is a king that's already in this country. So I wish you all to government too. Okay. A very wonderful morning. Uh, thank, thank you for you. your contribution. Yes. Welcome, keep keep safe and keep well. Thank you. Okay, yes, uh, you, you can hear that uh, very hard trending uh, call, and the caller has just said it that um, uh, we ought to government ought to do something about 
our housing issues and a better looking into the issues by making sure quackery is eliminated by making sure the right people do the right job because if it was a right person doing the right job we will not have this issue that just as ibrahim has raised it uh mala ibrahim has just raised it it won't have this issue if uh, a proper architect is in place or somebody that studied building properly, building engineering in a university or an engineer and all of that, we will not have this, uh, uh, these issues coming up. Yes. So the lines are open. Please feel free to call in. As I said, the line is 090-3222-9797. That's MTN line. 090-3222-9797. Airtel line 0808-222-237. Nine mobile line is 0818-222-2205. But uh, uh, please call in. The lines are open. Now, the issues raised are very straightforward, as we uh, have just said. Government ought to improve its enforcement, monitoring, and implementation arm, Federal Ministry of uh, Works and Housing. If it is in the state, you talk about uh, FCDA, Development Control, doing the needful. There are so many places in Abuja designated as residential. Suddenly, those residential areas have turned to commercial areas due to the urgent need for housing of commercial structures. People have converted. And at times when they are even converting, the conversion is not done properly in a manner that would uh, make room for all adjustments. Uh, because when you are changing a structure that is supposed to house just 10 people, a family of 10, father, mother, children, and all of that, to a structure that is not going to get visitors and on daily average 100, 200 people, the vibration from the entry and exit, the vibration from the use, the change, and all of that is evident. And things ought to be done properly and properly certified. Uh, all the... Uh, uh, downside of it that is those that give the approval and the upside of it those that monitor and evaluate that the right thing has been done are supposed to be continuously vigilant in this that's why i said the houses did not just appear overnight somebody was supposed to see it and monitor what we just see is they just go and put red paint on the building and say stop work when they say stop work, a week, two weeks later, you see the work going on. So what actually happened? Who gave the order to resume construction? And why did they not monitor it to be done properly? When I passed through it, because we had to see it as a journalist, uh, I went there on site and you could see the rubble. The, clearly, the admix of cement, the iron rods and things that were used were not the ones that are supposed to be used for that a three-story structure. You cannot bring uh, iron eight and instead of 12 and be using and casting and putting cement. And uh, the mix of cement is not in, 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 in the right uh, uh, admix. Therefore, there will be problems down the line. And it's happening continuously. Then uh, if you ask some people, they say there's also the issue of insincerity of the workmen that money must have been voted for the work or uh, given out for the work, but somebody somewhere is uh, eating more than his own share, more than his own fair share, and because he's eating more than his own fair share, he's uh, taking what uh, ordinarily he shouldn't take. So he has just made that mention. Ten bags, the person uses six. You tell him to use sharp sand or stone dust, the person just goes and brings uh, any sand he sees and mixes. And so uh, the monitoring, proper enforcement, and removal of quackery from the way we are doing things ought to be done. Uh, building collapse always comes with a loss of human life. 
loss of money because the person has now wasted a loss of time because the person wasted time and money and effort of other people who came to do the work at the end of the day paid out money and then at the end of the day is now a collapse that structure itself must have got at least way over 50 60 million regardless of how it was done and now it is down the people have died now the place is turned to a rubble issues are now created families have now been uh, rendered uh, fatherless or motherless depending on the um, the sex of the persons that died because we have not been told whether they were male or female now you find that uh, it's very tragic and painful that is one way we are looking at it we'll take a short break and come back and continue from there when we come back we'll look at the immediate causes the remote causes and what can be done to stop it like i said three-story building collapse in lagos and then uh, the other time the another building collapsed in lakey also about two weeks ago uh, just reminded us about the collapse of the building in uh, delta state is i think it's a church building and they kept on praying instead of leaving the place that uh, god will intervene a weak structure and people are praying inside and all of that and the church came down on, on everybody's head uh, the other day on social media, people did not take kindly to the Anambra state government pulling down certain structure belonging to a renowned pastor in Anambra. And the issue of government, and uh, Charles Soludo, the, His Excellency, had to come out and say, they're only doing the right thing. That structure was on a canal, and it is right of way for water's passage, and then that those extensions were not properly authorized. But if you go on social media, you find that people were all up in arms against the government, against this and all of that. And instead of following actually the real reasons behind that action and all of that. Unfortunately, a law enforcement agent, which is very sad, who was a part of the team, uh, decided to beat up the pastor and, and like that. And we had an, a Nigerian police took uh, an exception to that and he was uh, he's going through oddly room uh, proceedings now and might, be, might lose his job, uh, which is quite sad. Well, we'll take a short break and come back and uh, resume discussion on these issues. A wonderful good morning, the environment and you. My name remains Stephen Ogboli. What are you doing? Just as we said earlier on and we started, uh, the issues of substandard faulty design, negligence, incompetence, faulty construction, foundation failures, and extraordinary load put upon a structure. That structure from what we have had in, that collapsed in Kubwa was built to be a one-story structure suddenly 
an overload of two more stories were put upon the one story. Now, the person does not take into consideration that the foundation laid already was not for a three-story structure. Then overnight, a change is done. I hear that uh, one or two uh, engineers were changed over the working period because the first person could not uh, understand the changes being done. The architect that did the design himself was not carried along in the whole thing from what we're hearing. But now you find that all those persons, because their names appear in the uh, as, uh, application for approval to the FCDA, must show themselves. And now they are all going to have issues to answer. Uh, I believe that the professional bodies they belong to, for the engineers, if it is current, if it is for the architects, issue of architects, if it is for the builders and all of that, whatever registration council they belong to and whichever arm they are in should come hard on them to know actually what transpired, what happened, and why such should be the what we are passing through at the moment. Uh, like I said, building collapse leaves a very sour taste in the mouth of all persons because somebody has just died people have lost those in hospital and all of that they might be people that persons that might be amputated and what have you uh the limbs or hands or something and this is really sad and saddening at this time yes there is paucity of funds but if you do not have funds for a three-story structure why don't you do a very good two-story structure because the cost you reduce from not going three floors you use it on two floors, you'll be quite out adequate. Um, uh, the phone lines are open. Like we said earlier on, for, please feel free to call in 090-3222-29797. That's the MTN line. 090-3222-9797. The Airtel line is 0808. Two in four places. That's 0808-222-237. Then the nine mobile line is 0818-222-205. That's nine mobile, 0818-2 in five places, 0 and 5. Please feel free to call. The lines are open. Yes, uh, there are six main reasons for any building to have collapse. The recent collapse... Uh, it, well, whatever it's, it is, must have a weak foundation, faulty construction, failure to perform strength tests, and poor quality building materials, and uh, corrosion. Well, and of course, the natural disaster angle of it, which is the rain. Uh, I would say that uh, all of this come into play because. Um, uh, here we are with um, uh, the issues as they are presented. Um, as they are presented. Okay, we have another caller coming in. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Yes, who are we on to? Good morning. My name is Dr. Your name is, sir? From Asokoro. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yes, go ahead. Yes. We can hear you. Go ahead, sir. Okay, another call came in and it's cut off. Uh, the lines are open. Please feel free to call. Another call came in, so that uh, call went off. Uh, the lines are open, as we said, 090-3222-9797 and 090-3222-2979. Um, and 0808-222-22037. And the 9 mobile, 0818-222-22205. Feel free to call in. Uh, we just lost that line as soon as he was introducing himself. Um, 
but the lines are open please feel free to call in and um, and uh, let's discuss this very tragic saddening events um, as it is presenting itself yes like i said there are four uh, six major reasons why buildings collapse uh, one of them is weak foundation the foundation happens to be the most important uh, area of any building surprisingly that is the area people go and dig very shallow when they are setting out very shallow uh, foundations they do not go deep enough they do not cast the foundations and they just begin to build and when you build on a structure that is not firm it will therefore buckle at the end of the day when more overload is put and placed upon it then there's the issue of faulty construction it's not every uh, person that builds a flat or let's say a house that knows how to build an upstairs structure when you set out to get a building know the capacity and this expertise of the persons being hired to come into that construction and then there's the strength and weakness test that is supposed to be carried out the SWOT test at every level when you get to the foundation level you go over you go to the uh, setting up of the beams and all of that you check it through you, then there's the areas they have to check the rods the iron rods being brought in and then the concrete mix the add mix for it uh, the uh, if you meet a quantity surveyor he will tell you uh, already how much needs to be put in place or the architect and the engineer it should be a team of all the experts coming together to do and we have a very robust system in nigeria graduating experts in these areas whether we like it or not but nigerians will prefer to cut corners and go and get quacks to do the job and before you know we begin to lose men material resources to building collapse which is very very sad um what are the effects of uh, building collapse on society yeah you know the consequence of building collapse in the nigerian space and they include the loss of life and property as i said the reports say two persons have died and five were taken to hospital now you're going to also lose monies invested whether we like it or not that structure must have cost the person up to 50 to 60 million at the last count or more now in trying to cut corners uh, you didn't build a you didn't finish up the three story it collapsed on people and they died and now you've lost the monies invested you've lost the name there must be a legal outing a suit against him by government because as a uh, manslaughter and what have you and the uh, the person now has his image in disrepute both the persons that helped in the building and all of that are also supposed to be charged to court i pray that the right things be done and that government comes hard on this area so that people will desist from doing shoddy jobs that endanger lives and property and endanger society uh, we all must know that even though we have a right to acquire wealth and acquire property we also have a right it, it, it is on, on us that we must do the needful and that which is right uh, so that those persons are properly carried along yes um, we are going to look into the, uh, the area that has to do with how we can prevent building from collapsing. I just mentioned a few areas. We'll look at it after a short break. When we come back, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll look at what we can do as a system to what of this building collapse that is becoming very rampant. 
a good morning. Water not get any me. The phone lines are open. Zero nine zero three two 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 nine seven nine seven. Airtel line is zero eight zero eight two in five places. That's two 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 zero three seven. And the studio line is zero eight one eight two 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 zero and five. Um, like we said earlier on. How can we prevent building collapse in Nigeria? And it's simple. You have to regulate and stop the use of non-professionals and quack in the building and construction areas in the country. You have to stop the use of non-professionals and quacks in this area. You have to stop it. I'm saying a third time for emphasis. Quacks are everywhere, people parading themselves. We cannot be graduating people from polytechnics, from universities, from other schools or buildings across the country, and engineers, architects, and what have you, and all the surveyors and all of that, and houses are collapsing on people. It's quite ridiculous. Um, we already know what ought to be done. There must be a minimum standard of people that should be on a site, on a supervision site, especially if the building is labeled commercial, or if it is re in residential areas where they are building in a massive structure of more than two houses at a time, there must be a site engineer, there must be the architect, there must be a surveyor on ground, there must be a builder there, there must be other supporting uh, 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 personnel, key personnel, who have the wherewithal and the understanding and the knowledge, who have already gone through the right training so that the right things are being done. But uh, quackery, if it is not totally eliminated and reduced to the barest minimum, will keep on having houses falling upon people. And then there's also this issue. In the area of monitoring, uh, like now, it's, it falls under the purview of Development Control and FCDA. There should be proper monitoring at every level. And there must be uh, certifications given at every level. The foundation is certified. They give you approval to go to the next stage. We cannot just keep on building houses for building's sake and then uh, at the end of the day, uh, losing man and material resources are losing our reputation because it also goes out there it's social media is worldwide houses keep collapsing and it keeps happening we're not saying it doesn't collapse in other climbs but we as a, a population of 200 million must look in and above must look into it properly because in a shorter time than now 
where population will increase to about 250 million. And as population increases, there also is a housing deficit increasing. There also is now the pressure on having more houses, both residential and commercial, and what have you, building of bridges, bridge, building of culverts, dev design and development of parks and all of that. So we must do the needful. We must set up standards and uh, have it at quality control level. If you come out to the other areas, that's the, why they set up places like NAFDAG, Standard Organization, what have you. Now you come to the construction, you have the institutes and the various organizations and uh, agencies. Therefore, it is supposed to, for us to do the needful, to design and build houses that will withstand a hundred years from the day of construction. It is our right as Nigerians to have habitable, safe areas to dwell in. Yes, and um, lines are open 090 Airtel line 0808222237. And um, nine mobile line zero eight one eight two 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 zero and five. The lines are open. Feel free to call in, and uh, let us rub minds, and um, uh, let us come up with a consensus that will um, help government, help us all uh, to create more awareness on this malice that is eating deep into our national development. It has been argued that structural defects are the major cause of building collapse. And the structural defects, as I said earlier on, starts right from the foundation. It starts right from the foundation. The foundation of the structure must properly be set out. And at that level, the three persons which are key, both the design architect, the engineer, and the builder must be there at the site to make sure that the right things are set up. Who is putting up the iron rods, who are doing the wrought iron work, uh, the iron working and then the concreting must be done properly. And then the compaction and all of that must follow. And then the normal time to be given for it to dry and to set so that you now start putting up a structure on it. All those things must be followed through. There should be no shortcuts. There should be no um, half measures and quackery in place. When that happens, we lose lives. And losing lives, no matter who, where, when, it's very painful to any person. And at the end of the day, you also lose money. Because at the end of the day, 50, 60, or 70 million or more has just gone down the drain and lives have been lost. And at the end of the day, you leave government with the issue of litigation and taking people to court, autopsies, and what have you. All those costs added to society are needless if the right things are being done. And therefore, as a country, we must rise to its occasion and begin to do the right thing so that we can move ahead. Yes, I think we're having a call now. Yes, a good morning. Good morning. Yes. Please, who are we on to? My name is, my name is Patrick. Okay, Patrick. I'm from New Carol. Okay, Patrick, good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Okay, go ahead. What's your yeah, you are, we are talking about building collapse. Yes. The unfortunate incident of what happened in Kuba yesterday. Yes. It's unfortunate. Very. And uh, I want to ask a question, sir. Go ahead. Um, let's say somebody who has been building houses for 40 years. Yes. It's now 70 years. Yes. He has built several houses. Yes. He did not go to school. Yes. He's not an engineer. He was. Yes. He learns how to build house. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Will we classify that person as a quack? No. What? So, 
who, who oh, okay. Let, let me, you have just said he has been building houses for 40 years. So yes. he is a mason. He is okay. an artisan. He has a skill. Though he is not, as we will call it, lettered in the four walls of an academic institution, he has learned it over time. He is not a quack. He is an artisan. He is a mason. He is a skilled personnel in the workplace of building. What happens is that he should not be the team lead in any building site. The team lead should always be the architect, the engineer, the surveyor, and the builder that has a building engineering certificate from a university. Let me now characterize it. The architect does not go to site and take a trowel and begin to carry headpan. That's not his duty. That's also the duty of the engineer. That's not the duty of the surveyor, and that's not the... Their duties are shared. Everybody knows his own. The design architect comes and tells you how he, it is designed and interprets the plan. The engineer makes sure that those items that are required to be done properly are followed through specification engineering design. Now, the surveyor is the one that checks because you have quantity surveyors. Now, you, you, are you following me? Yes, the quantity surveyor, because there's a land surveyor and then the building surveyor, will tell you what admix. He will even give you the number of blocks you need to build a three bedroom structure, four bedroom a two-story, a three-story, as in this case, and how many bags of cement. So from the set out of the house, you already know how many. Now, that man you talked about for 30, 40 years has been building is now very good in it. He's a skilled artisan. You bring him and he brings his skill to bear in the physical deployment and development of that building. Is that... And also, those skilled artisans also belong to societies and groups. They have their own uh, groups they belong to, and uh, their groups are well recognized. And we know those ones that belong. What we now have is that there are so many itinerants moving up and down. They just call somebody from somewhere. And recently, we have started using the skills of people from outside Nigeria because it's cheaper. They bring Nigerians. They bring Chadians. They bring Cameroonians, which is also good, but then you must follow specifications. Are, are you following me? I am, I am. Yeah, so that is the issue from our take. Is that one you just decide is, uh, the, you just described is well and good. He's quite good in what he does. If he has been doing it for 20, 30 years, then we must say he's quite good in what he does. And uh, let me tell you one of these things about those ones that have done this work for quite a while. They are good in even sitting down with the uh, architects and engineers to discuss these things. Site de development is discussed. They show you areas and no man is an island and they come up with a firm building that is interpreted properly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other yeah, contribution? Right. I'm listening to you. Sir. Yeah, you know, the reason why I ask this question is what we see in our environment is um, the place where I live is we see these um, people who are you classify you classify as mess Yes. Do the job of the architect. Yes. Do the job of the engineer. Yes. Do the job of the um, surveyor. Component of they even do the, the they even do the iron work. They tie the iron the iron, iron rod. They, yes. they, they will do everything. So if um, we have this and uh, those who are trained as engineers, yes. is it that their services is no cost? That's why the reason why Nigeria don't go for them. We have just said that the is issue is the cutting of corners, reducing of cost by those who are developing. So they get one person to do four people's job, which is actually very wrong. You now find in sites, I've also had that experience. You find in a site, the mason is the one buying rods and tying it together and doing the beams and all of that. Instead, and that's not his job. 
there's supposed to be somebody who is into the iron foundry work, iron bending and doing the needful. Then there's the carpentry aspect. You find in some cases, the same mason is the one buying nails, putting iron, buying, is it, wood. buying wood and then knocking it up and then continuing from there. Once you introduce that, then you have a disaster happening. And that's why I made the point that the monitoring and development area the FCDA, what we just see is red paint. They just come and say stop work. Okay, you say stop work. What was the finding at the stop work? Now, when the person starts work after a while, did you give a certification? Was it properly discussed in the office with the architect, the surveyor, the engineer, and all of that, including that same mason, as supposed to be at that meeting, so that you are not telling them, we as the monitoring body and we as the enforcers, we have seen that there is this, that, 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 or such. Therefore, our position is this, this, this. And then the person has to now follow suit. Mm. Yes. Okay, now, now the, the moral of what, whatever we see that we are seeing right now is that as those who want to build, they should take um, all the measures to make sure they bring people that are qualified. Yes. It's not that we don't bring anybody who just say that they can do the job of four, the four, four men. Yes, at the same time. Something that four people can do. Somebody yes. will just say that he will do it just because of um, money. To cut cost. Then there's also yes, the so issue of uh, people stealing from sites. One of the biggest places you find pillaging in any scene is a construction site. You buy a trailer yeah, load of cement. In a day, two days, they tell you it has finished. What happened to Honestly, the whole 500 that one, bags of cement? That one even happens. You don't have to buy a trailer. Yes. If you buy 10, 10 bags, you give somebody that you... The next day, if you come, they will tell you that they have used uh, eight. Yes, out of 10. You see only two of them. They have only two of them. That, that, that is the... That, yes. It's a big issue, sir. Yes. It's a really big issue. I just hope that um, we do more, much more. I'm more enlightenment to Nigerians who want to build houses. Yes. And I think that that's what we need. The last point you just read is all comes to the issue of monitoring. You'll find that if you have yes. an architect on site and they know an architect is on your site, they can't steal your products. The reason is simple. They know he knows the quantity you need to put 10 bags of cement and 100 blocks. There are those that are so skilled, including the mason you just said. He will tell you how many bags of cement is used to raise 200 blocks. He will tell you how many sand, uh, whether it's a, a truckload of sand or true, to build a whole structure. He will tell you. So if you bring the stone at this, if he comes around and he sees that some are missing, you don't even have to tell him. He just tells you, come, for these 50 block blocks you raised, you cannot have finished three bags of cement. Where are they? Where is one bag? Where is that and that? Because they know. So, but there's an active connivance most times where people set out the money they have already charged the person. Okay, I'm going to do a structure for you. My fee is one million. Then he sees that he, he needs more money. Then from the building materials procured, the person begins to sell iron rods, sell cement, sell sand, sell stone dust and what have you. Before you know, the whole thing is compromised. Honestly, yes. Honestly, so, uh, I, I equally think um, those people are molding blocks too. They should stop cutting corners. There are some mm. places where they mold blocks. They put more sand than cement. That is a, a the, that is why people know where you get blocks. There are some places in Abuja here. A nine inch block, you know how much it is. A six inch, you know how much it is. If you want any other differentials, you know how much it is, and they pay you pay for that service. Those blocks, you raise them up and drop them, they will stand. But there are some blocks, even mm. trying to offload it from the vehicle, you see it breaking in the hand of so, people so that are... People want to even raise it up. Yes. You know, we don't break. Yes. They want to raise it from the ground, we break. It, so, it, it's, uh, it's, it's really sad. The right and thing needs to be done. See, yes. It's a really big issue, and need more enlightenment. Yes. We just have to... I don't know how we do it, change the mind of Nigerians, and even those people who are moving blocks and other things. So we, we, pro, we, pro, we yes yes with programs like this and with us being more vigilant i am sure somewhere the landlord of that building was an absentee landlord he was not coming to site and even if he came to site he did not come with somebody that knew the job to give him professional advice for reasons best known to him he must have been careless about it because we've had to face facts. Houses don't just fall. 
they must have been signed there would have been a crack somewhere somebody must have been patching that crack within the system because before it falls there must be cracked you must see fault lines you must see areas where there are some things protruding and what have you it didn't just fall on its own in fact for a house that is still under construction it therefore means that whoever was the site engineer coming around there was not only negligent but uh, i will use the word wicked because he could have called the attention of the owner of the house and said this place won't go or oh god what do we do and then if it was for it to be remedied it would have been remedied if it couldn't have been remedied they pull it down and start afresh yes so um thank you, thank you sir yes thanks for your phone call it's been a good one talking to you um patrick uh how is your side of abuja receiving torrential rains yes yeah, so the rain, the rain is dropping every day. Uh, Nymet weather forecast, we started from that perspective, I said that there will be flooding in many areas, including the FCT, because of the increase in uh, rainfall this year. And we find that there is also the issue, and it affects these houses, if they are not properly structured, uh, leading to the weakening of the foundations and what have you. Uh, but whatever, people should stop building in water courses, and in places that are swampy. One of the reasons for this building collapse in Kuba was that that place was a swamp, but they didn't reclaim it properly, and they didn't do the compacting, and they did not do the uh, the foundations well, as I would say from the outset, and then we are where we are. So, uh, good morning. Final word for us? No. no. Okay. I thank you so much okay. for this education. Okay. We are learning a lot. Okay. Yes, uh, the environment and you this Saturday we're about signing off. Um, let our final word here is in the studio is that Nigerians should uh, up their games, be vigilant, and do the right thing. Uh, we can't continue to lose man and material resources, we can't continue burying people, and because of some people's negligence, and we call on the authorities to do the needful let the right things be done a proper inquiry as to why it happened a wonderful good morning